in the Taupo volcanic zone, there are a number of large collapsed craters called Cordera, two of which are still active. In and around those collapsed giant craters or calderas are many lakes. Back eight million years ago in the Coromandel, we also had calderas and similar eruptions. And we also had similar lakes captured inside some of the subsided craters. This morning, we're on the eastern side of Coromandel Peninsula. And we've come to look and try and explain the wonderful features we see there. Remote sensing surveys have found a large 10 kilometre diameter area right where we are with low density rocks and around it it's got much higher density andesites and grey wacky rocks. If we look at a cross section through this collapsed area it's subsided about one to one and a half kilometres like so and so this is the collapsed crater or caldera and harder rocks are right beneath it and outside it but in here it's filled up with lower density ignimbrites and some rhyolites have come up and erupted domes up in the middle of it like so. In the northwest is Fitianga. We are at Hahe. Up here is Cathedral Cove. This is the caldera. This low area within the collapsed caldera is now filled with the Fitianga harbour here. As we're driving into Hotwater Beach and to Hahe and Cathedral Cove, we drive along a road through the side of the caldera. We're on the side of the road into Hotwater Beach and Hahe and Cathedral Cove. The hills over here are the rim, the southern rim of the caldera, made of weathered and eroded ignimbrite. If we come across from there, we see the hills on the other side of this flat plain are the eroded rhyolite domes that intruded inside the caldera. But between those rhyolite domes and the rim of the caldera is this strange flat grassed plain. This whole area was once a lake inside the caldera, filled up with sediment to make this flat floored valley. There are some puzzles still with the Fitianga caldera. Caldera collapsed craters like this always form above a big rhyolite magma chamber and when they erupt to begin with, all the gaseous part comes out and erupts through here and forms huge ignimbrite clouds that flow away as pyroclastic flows, etc. The question is, where is this material that erupted out of here? It's been calculated that it's 180 cubic kilometres of material. So today we can find no evidence of where that rock is that came out of that collapsed crater during that large ignimbrite eruption. So the low density ignimbrites that fill the collapsed crater came from another large caldera eruption from nearby or soon after the collapsed crater was formed. And so it was filled to the top with ignimbrite and that's the ignimbrite we're going to see at Cathedral Cove. It attracts tens of thousands of tourists and holiday makers every year to this amazing beach and landform. This arch provides a way at low tide to walk between two beautiful sandy beaches. The one you can see there and Cathedral Cove on the north side. And when we get out here, we can see in fact that the arch has been eroded through a small peninsula of rock that sticks out into the sea. So this ignimbrite rock that forms the cliff is pretty massive. There are only a few fracture planes through it. One of them is right along the apex of the arch itself. On each side of the arch there are in fact a few other angled fractures into the rock that the sea has eroded along. Here's one going up here, another one in here. So erosion on a, a number of different fractures has formed the arch and its sloping walls. If we look at the cliff right here, lovely fresh face, it shows there's been a recent rock fall. It shows us all the instability of the cliffs around here. So if we look at this cliff section up here, we see very little in the way of structure in it. I can see just a little bit of faint horizontal layering in it. So ignimbrites come in as fast flowing pyroclastic flows or ignimbrite flows that are a mix of hot gas, ash and pumice, several hundred meters thick that flow out from the vent and then come to a standstill, slowly compact down 
cool and hardened as a horizontal layer. At the north end of Cathedral Cove, we've got a beautiful conical 20 metre high sea stack that's been eroded out of the ignimbrite rock, just like the rock that forms the cliffs. We can see in the, inside the rock there that there are very faint horizontal layering. Some zones have got a lot more pebbles of harder rock in them, others are somewhat finer, giving us an idea of the flow that deposited these ignimbrites. So one particularly interesting feature of this stack is at the bottom near sea level and we can see we've got what's called a high tide notch on both sides of the sea stack where it's eroding in underneath and that's right at about high tide level. And why might this be? You would think that the waves would be of equal strength all the way up and would have eroded lower down as well and not just a notch at this higher tide level. And it's probably because with the tides, the upper part of the tidal range gets wet and soaking, and the water gets in there. When the tide goes down, it has time for it to dry out. So the wetting and drying, wetting and drying, swelling the rock and then contracting again is gradually eating into the lower part of the stack. Whereas lower down at lower tide levels, it remains waterlogged and wet throughout and is somewhat more resistant to that erosion. Now we're sitting here on blocks of flow band and rhyolite. And this has come down from higher up above us. And this is from a, one of those rhyolite domes that intruded through the ignimbrite and then the flows came out over the top. And it's got big bluffs behind us that are eroding and these blocks are coming down. We're now at Flax Mill Bay. It's about eight kilometres around the coast from Cathedral Cove towards Fitianga. So here we're in a different ignimbrite from Cathedral Cove. This is two million years younger than the one we saw there that was erupted from the southern part of the Fitianga Caldera about six million years ago. And it's got a lot of bits of pumice sticking out, quite large pebbles of pumice together with small fragments of darker solid rhyolite rock. And in this ignimbrite we can see the most extreme example of a high tide notch sticking out nearly 10 metres above the high tide platform. Here we have a, a sheet-like body of rock that's breaking through the ignimbrite on either side. It's called a dike. Now most dikes are usually associated with volcanic or igneous rocks where a, a sheet of hot magma intrudes along a fracture, pushes it apart and then it cools and solidifies into a solid volcanic rock cutting through the host rock. But in this instance, this isn't lava, this isn't magma, these are pumice class and grains of ash. We call the, the grains clasts. And so this kind of dike made up of sediments is called a clastic dike. We can see on each side of this dike we have layers of thinly bedded very fine grained ash. The first question is how did we get this material in here? And it's hard to think of where it may have come from except from inside this ignimbrite as it was cooling. And that's I think what's happened here is it's cooling on top, became solid and fractured but down beneath us as it's compacting there's gas in amongst the loose ignimbrite and that pressurized gas is coming up along these fractures above and bringing with it some of the ash and some of the, the pumice that's still loose. That gas that's under pressure is carrying the fine ash along first and it's gradually been added on progressively inwards from both sides. And then later on it's carried the loose coarser pumice particles along. In the very middle we've got horizontally bedded or slightly curved bedding so this material has been bedded using gravity and this is suggesting here that all of a sudden the current that was carrying this material has suddenly dropped away. Maybe the fissure broke through to the surface and the gas pressure suddenly dropped. And all of a sudden all this material subsided back slightly into the fissure between these two sides. This is most unusual. One of the very few places in New Zealand or the world where you actually see two different processes in a clastic dike through an ignimbrite. The caldera 
erupted 8 million years ago and the rhyolite domes were intruded and since then there's been quite a lot of eruptions and erosion. So here at Fitianga the caldera is not quite as clear as it is in a young one such as at Rotorua. But with a bit of detective work and looking at the landscape with a more critical eye you can pick out the rhyolite domes in the middle and some of the caldera rim.